In this video, I'll be showing you how to make two variations of peplum. This overlapping peplum right here and another one popularly called the handkerchief peplum. You're welcome to Kema Freak. My name is Kemi Omorube. I'll be starting with the overlapping peplum and in this case I'm making use of a waist circumference of 37 inches. For this I will need to create two 180 degree peplums. Please check out my very comprehensive video on how to achieve different degrees of peplums. So I am dividing the waist circumference by 2 and that gave me 18.5. Now because this is an overlap, okay, I will need to add some extra to that measurement because what I just calculated, we take the space from the center front to the center back and we need it to go beyond the center front. So I decided to add additional four inches for the overlap. Now, if you want your overlap to get all the way to the sides, like it is in that picture, you have to add a quarter of the waist circumference because that's the measurement from the center front to the, to the side. But I made use of four inches, okay? so. I added that to the 18.5 and I have 22.5 for the circumference I'm working with. Okay, now I will divide this 22.5 by 3.14, which is the formula for achieving a 180 degree flare. So on my paper now, I indicated that this top should be on fold when I'm cutting on fabric and I mark out the radius gotten from that calculation and that's exactly what I'm drawing out. So now I have to measure the the length of the peplum and along the side with the fold, I made it five inches and on the other end, I made it 10 inches because it is not a symmetrical peplum. The sides are shorter, if I may use that word, than what you have at the front. So I just continue reducing that measurement and blending what I have here, five inches into the 10 inches I have on the other end. So that way we are creating a curve, a smooth curve. Along the center front of the peplum, you observe that it is slanted, right? So now we're going to create a slant at that center. We're not making use of this straight edge. So I'll just pick up my ruler and create a slant around that part of the pattern. Now you can even make this slant parallel or almost parallel to that of the other edge of the peplum which is on fold okay the part that we indicated will be on fold on fabric you can make it parallel to that if you want the slant very obvious so now i'll just go ahead and cut out this pattern then place on fabric While transferring this to fabric, remember to add the half an inch seam allowance all around the pattern. The only part you are not adding seam allowance is the, the shorter part of the peplum where we indicated will be on fold. So you know that your fabric should be on fold. So after cutting out the fabric, you can go ahead and cut out a lining as well for it. And also fusible interfacing to give it some structure. I'm making use of the soft paper stay here because I didn't want it standing out too much on the dress. So once I'm through cutting, I'll just place on the ironing table, give it a good press and we'll proceed to sewing. Here are the pieces I cut out and I made use of the same fabric for the lining as well, but the, the lining part had to be in pieces because my fabric wasn't enough to have a straight cut. Okay, so first I'll be joining the 
pieces of the lining together so that we can have exactly the same for both the fabric and the lining part so here i'm done doing that and i'll put the lining on the main piece right side facing each other and go ahead to sew by half an inch from the straight edge through the curve to the other straight part so i'm closing this area up by half an inch so the corners has to be pointed so when you get to that corner pull down the needle turn it around and continue sewing i went ahead to cut out the excess allowance so that the seam allowance doesn't become um thick while looking at the peplum from the outside okay and it also helps it relax properly into each other next i'll turn this inside out proceed to the ironing table to give it a good press so it lays flat now i have two pieces of this remember one for each side of the body Now here's the dress I'll be attaching mine to. It's sewn already, okay? So I place the first part, that's the longest part of the peplum, four inches away from the center front, just like I, you know, I structured it to be. And I'll be pinning all round from the inside. And once I'm done pinning, I'll proceed to um, sew on the sewing machine I'll be top stitching from the inside now so that the seam doesn't show on the outside you can even use a needle and thread to stitch this on it very neatly at this point I wasn't that satisfied with the slant at the center front so I pulled out the entire peplum again and went ahead to slant it further remember I told you that you could make the slant parallel to what you have on the other side of the peplum okay so i pulled this out and went ahead to slant it further so that the slant at that front will be more obvious but if you're making your peplum very overlapping if it's going to get to the side the overlap if the overlap will get to the side okay also the v shape in front there will be more obvious as well once i was done with that adjustment i proceeded to attach it again to the dress and this was the outcome which I was satisfied with. The handkerchief peplum is even more straightforward. What you have to do is ensure you have a wide enough paper or fabric which we fold twice because we are making a 360 or a full circle degree peplum. Then you take the waist circumference or the circumference of the area you'll be attaching it to, to and divide by 6.28, which is the formula we derived in the video I spoke about. Check the link in the description box for that full video on how to make different degrees of peplum. So once you get the radius, you mark it out on your paper and cut. Next, you measure the length of the peplum you want on both edges of your paper or fabric, as the case may be. And you draw out the straight lines, which will intersect at a point. So your handkerchief peplum can be in the form of a square or a rectangle. So that means you can make one side longer than the other, or you can make the both sides equal. So for this, I have equal sides here that I'm making a square shape handkerchief peplum. So I just drew out the line there and I'll cut this out and just show you what it will look like. Now you can open up the paper and you have this peplum with um, pointed edges which basically is the edge of the rectangle so we have this and you can 
make the pointed edges be at the center front and the side instead of the other way so you can basically make use of any of this presentation so and that is it i told you it was a very simple type of peplum thank you for watching please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't 